Yo, what up, Card Kingdom family? Kenji back for some more drafting here on Magic Online. Got ourselves some more mom draft as we push into uh, a couple weeks worth of this format now. It's been good. Been really, really nice. Um, not going to say it's my favorite format of all time, but could be in the top 10 very, very easily for draft formats. Lots of cool things you get to do. Anyways, let's jump into our draft where we've opened Mama Elspeth, Archangel Elspeth. Planeswalkers are pretty damn good, and this one is no exception. Although, I will say, I think if you wanted, like if this was a Pro Tour draft or something, taking the Invasion of Amonkhet might be a correct. This invasion is just so insane, but I'll take the Planeswalker here, pick one, pack one, and uh, see what we can do from there. Ooh, maybe we can force a little bit of the knight action then. Blue-white knights is one of the more aggressive strategies in this format. Um, maybe one of the reasons I like this format so much is because there are a lot of cool swingy cards and that you can do five colors pretty darn easily in the format. There are just so many cool fixers. There's all of these lands um, in addition to other fixing but, uh, yeah, maybe we can just go with more, one of the more straightforward archetypes and go blue-white knights here. Take the second pick, Marshal of Zalfir, which is, you know, the uncommon dual color for the knight stack. 2-2 two, two for 2, pumps the other knights, and also taps creatures. So, pretty fantastic one. We're losing out on an Elvish Vat Keeper. Another great value creature. 3-3 three, three for 3 that uh, has some good incubate values. Overgrown Pest Tier is pretty solid. I like this start, though. This is a really solid start. Getting past a Realm Breaker. This one's fun. I'm not going to call it a good card, but it is certainly fun. And against a lot of the slower decks, the more controlly decks, uh, this is actually a good win con versus them. Uh, for the Knights deck, I guess we have Tranquil Cove over nothing. Actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to take the Realm Breaker as a sideboard card pick three. That seems really weird. But I think it's so good versus a lot of the decks in the format that having access to it um, is going to be worthwhile over, you know, just one of these other random cards that's not necessarily super busted anyways. So let's do that. Let's just immediately put it to the sideboard and then uh, continue down, hopefully, the blue-white knight path. Pick number four, we get a Joyful Storm Sculptor for the blue-red Convoke deck. A couple of okay white two-drops, although neither of them are knights. We have a Wicked Slumber here, which is a nice tempo card with Convoke. Mm, then there's like one of the land cyclers. Oh, I didn't mention it, but yeah. In addition to all of these lands, some of the fixing in the format comes in the form of these land cyclers. There's one of each color. And these cards are always just good in no matter um, what format you're playing. If there's a if there's a land cycler, it's going to be a good card. Guess here I'll just try to cut off the cheap white cards and take the Sun Blessed Guardian here. Again, even though it's not a knight. Okay, and this is where we start considering pivoting a bit, because if we're getting a fifth pick, Invasion of Amonkhet, then that's a huge signal. I didn't really go over the card initially when it was in my pack with Elspeth, but three mana battle, four defense. Uh, when it enters, your opponent discards a card, you draw a card, each player mills three cards, and then when it flips, it turns into a 4-4 four, four copy of any creature in the graveyard. So it's an insane card, and I think it's a huge signal here if we're getting it fifth pick. Scornblade Berserker is another pretty big sign, I think, for black. Another really, really solid backup creature. A couple of good white cards. Invasion of Amonkhet there is way too good to pass up. Overgrown Pest still in the pack. Tranquil Cove. Halo Charge Scab is also amazing in the blue-black deck. This one is 5 mana, 4, 4, mill 2. Uh, each player when it ETBs, and then you can put an instant sorcery or battle on top of your library from your graveyard, so... This is starting to get a little bit interesting. Skyline, also fantastic. One of the incubate value cards that just gives you a lot of time. Five life and a five five with reach. Hmm. I kind of want to take the overgrown pest and see if maybe we can do the five color. If we do, the realm breaker actually might make the main deck as well. Let's take the halo charge scab at this point. Tidal Terror, Dismal Backwater, we'll take the land. Okay, we are going deep here. Tranquil Cove now, I think. Although Omen Hawker is not terrible. Well, yeah, let's just take the fixing. 
Tidal Terror now for the Land Cycler. Okay. Um, I mean, still could be blue-white for sure, but we I think we got some really good signals for potentially going into some kind of blue-black deck. I have good Esper fixing right now with the blue-white and the blue-black land, but I don't know. Whenever you see Invasion of Amonkhet past, like, third pick, it, it is a very big sign. Okay, getting some more night stuff on the wheel if we still want to keep that option available. I mean, the gorilla is good for blue-black too. Maybe I should just do that instead since we didn't really see much white signalage. Yeah, let's take the gorilla here. Hmm, Wicked Slumber goes into either strategy, I think, so let's do that. I was thinking about taking that when the uh, pack first came around anyways. I guess the biggest... What is this still doing here is the pest in my deck. Um, essence is decent. Counters a battle or a creature unless your opponent pays four. And if they do pay four, then you still get uh, an incubate two. So even in the late game, it's not completely dead like a lot of these type of counters can be. Weird draft, weird draft. All right, another Halo Charge Scab. Um, if we get enough synergies, it's definitely going to be worth running two of these, especially if we can get a Breach the Multiverse. Breach the Multiverse with Halo Charge Scab is effectively a two-card win con. The Breach the Multiverse is the seven-mana sorcery that mills each player ten cards, and then you get to grab a creature from each graveyard and put it on the battlefield. And so with the Scab, you can very easily just win in the cor over the course of two turns by milling your opponent 20 in addition to all of the other mill that's randomly occurred, right? <laughs> okay, well, pack two. We opened four mana mythic white card in pack one. We're opening a four mana mythic white card in pack two. And Elish Norn is just so stupid good. Four mana, three, five vigilance. Whenever a source and opponent control deals damage to you or a per permanent you control... That source's control loses two life unless they pay one. So that it in itself can be very busted, and then it just it flips into an unbeatable uh, saga, effectively. So you need to sacrifice three other creatures, and then when you do it flips, and you incubate two five times, and then they all turn into creatures. Then all of your creatures get plus one, plus one, and gain double strike. It, it's just, yeah, there's there's no question what we're taking there. Holy moly, we're passing or getting past an insane glistening dawn here too. Card is very, very good, but there's a second Marshal of Zalfir. There's a Norns Inquisitor, which is also one of the best two drops in the format. Two mana one one, incubate two when it enters, and then whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, you put a one one counter on it. So kind of like a mini blade splicer that just gets a lot of value later on. Um, it's going to be really hard to pull me off of white with Elspeth and Elish Norn, so. Might not be doing so much of the knight stuff. I think the Inquisitor is just a better choice here. What is this one? Invasion of Theros. When an ETB search your library for an Aura god or demigod, is Elish Norn a god? No, it's a Praetor. So we're not taking that. Best choices here for us. Tranquil Cove, not bad. Refusal is amazing. Uh, here's the white land cycler, which is pretty solid, and then like a temporal cleansing. I think artistic refusal is easily the best card for us here. The intercessor you can pick up pretty late, and I generally don't want to run too many of those anyways. My guess now is that I'm going to end up cutting the black. And maybe just kind of sticking with the, uh, the knight plan, but we'll see. A uh, really, really weak pack here for us. I think we're going to make sure we get one of these protection effects. Angelic Intervention here. Instead of taking a second to simulate Essence. That's fine. Halo Forager. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we're just playing straight up Esper. Because Halo Forager is, again, one of the best uncommons in the format. Three mana, one, three... Or, sorry, three mana, three, one flyer. That when it ETBs, you can pay X... Exile an instant or sorcery from any graveyard and cast it. Very gross. Uh, and there's a captive weird here over second artistic refusal. Tetsuko is also really good. 
weird has more value. It's... Omen Hawker is okay, actually, with some of the stuff we have. Stasis Field is okay removal. I mean, Moment of Truth, when you have this many bombs, might not actually be a bad play, even though I don't care for that card all that much. I could see the uh, Moment of Truth being worthwhile, but I think taking the Omen Hawker is okay here. All right, we'll take the first Intercessor now, just to make sure we get one. I have a feeling we're not running the Racer, but it is fixing in a pinch. I don't th think the Quende is worth it here. Ah, this is a weird draft. We're like Pseudo Knight, but more Esper control. More S. Elspeth control, if you will. All right, last few pickups incoming. Do we want the looter in this deck? Three mana, one, four, vigilance, two to loot. Yeah, maybe. We have a weird deck here for sure. I'm not quite pleased with the number of creatures we have uh, for our Elish Norn, but I wonder if I should have just been like white black Phyrexians or something. This is a weird one. <laughs> Definitely a weird one. Mm. Maybe take the Doombringer here. Better than the Phy uh, Phyrexian Archivist, I assume. So how many things do we have Omen Hawker to utilize for? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, our Omen Hawker is not too shabby here in terms of uh, abilities we can activate with it. And last few pickups here probably shouldn't matter. Change the equation, I guess, a good sideboard card versus... What, specifically red-green decks? Counter-target red or green spell with mana value 6 or less. Yeah, that's a good sideboard card. Um, I guess Tiller of Flesh isn't bad. 2-4 for four, 4. Whenever you cast a spell that targets one or more permanents, you get to incubate for 2. We have a couple of ways to do that right now. Actually, we only have two ways. We have Slumber and we have Intervention. This card always looks better than it actually plays out, but maybe pack three will give us another reason to to continue playing it. Could also use a little bit more fixing here, I guess. We only have the two lands. As we have two land cyclers, but they're both for our main colors of blue and white right now and not for the splash black. Ay ay ay, and we open another insano rare in pack three, and that's Glissa, Herald of Predation. Oh my lord, five mana, three five. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you get to do one of crazy things, the main ones being incubate two twice. Uh, yeah, this pack is actually um, insane. Glissa, Refusal, Nightmare, another Invasion of Amonkhet, another Norns Inquisitor, Fixing removal. Holy crap, I don't know what we're doing here. I mean, I guess the safe play is just to take another Norns Inquisitor. There's a chance I don't end up playing the black and we just go like good blue-white cards but not really knight synergies. Absolutely nuts. What are we getting past here? Yeah, we're getting past a preening champion. There goes another Realm Breaker's Grasp. Invasion of Vryn. This is just the number one common in the format, though. Three mana, two, two flyer. That makes a one, one. It's got so many good synergies. It's a freaking knight. This is going to be a crazy one. All right, yeah, let's just lock in the blue-white good stuff as we get a seal from existence here as our next pick. Three mana O-Ring that has Ward 3. Very good. Another Grasp. I think that's the third Grasp in a row, isn't it? Another Refusal I don't think makes sense. 
Yeah, let's cut the black for now. And what are we looking here at? Another refusal, maybe. I could actually see running that moment of truth, though. Again, with so many bombs, anticipate can't be terrible. Let's get a raff here now, too. Jeez, how many instants and sorceries do I have for that? One, two, three, four, five. So maybe not great on the raff, but it can get better still. And now we can kind of prioritize getting some more instants and sorceries. Super weird draft. Uh, <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Norns Inquisitor, again, is just so good. This is one of the best uncommons, if not the number one uncommon in the format. And now we have three of them. Holy moly. I think our deck is nuts. We don't have much synergy, but we have, like, the nuts. I, I might even want to run an, uh, another Omen Hawker here. Because now with Triple Inquisitor, we have a lot of Incubate tokens. Other option being, like, Sigiled Sentinel, just a good 3-3. Three, three, or, I guess, 2-2 two, two with backup 1. Knight. I'll take the Omen Hawker, though. Skittering Surveyor. Oh, that makes Splashing a little bit more reasonable. Splashing Halo Forger and Invasion of an Amonkhet is not bad. We could also just take Stasis Field to play it safe and take another um, on-color removal spell, but... Surveyor is definitely the more fun pick. Plus, I can just now cut, like, the Tiller of Flesh. And we got another Black, black Fixer anyway, so... Yeah, baby, let's go. Let's go. Forager back in. Invasion of Amonkhet back in. What are we cutting then? I think the Sun Blessed Guardian's really weak. Don't think we want to splash any of those other black cards though. Do I still run the Realm Breaker? Eh, for the fun of it, why not? It's good with our double omen hawkers, anyways. Oh, I should have taken Unsealed and Acropolis there. Whoopsies, that was a really bad pickup. I took, I just took like an unplayable over Unsealed and Acropolis, which is actively good. Can get back like our Elish Norn and whatnot. Yeah, cool deck though. Let's double check our instants and sorceries for Wrath, because I don't think we got there. One, two, maybe three. Four, five, six. Yeah. I guess Raph is probably still just a little bit too good to not run. Crazy, crazy draft. I suppose cutting the counter is not bad. I can bring that in. I guess 16 lands is also not crazy. We have a relatively low curve, plus I have two land cyclers. Ah, no, you know what? 16 lands. Let's get let's get away with that. Blue-white bombs splashing black. That's, that's what we're playing. We're not playing blue-white knights. We're playing blue-white bombs splashing black. 6, 7, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we need to go up here. That would be 8 blue, 8 white, 3 black. Actually, we need we need we have a lot of double white. But that should be okay. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna cut the Daxos and run the Flywheel Racer instead for extra fixing. Plus, we have a bunch of low cheap creatures. All right, this looks fun. Esper bombs here in the March of the Machine Draft League. Let's go to round one and see if we can fight. All right, here we are for round one of this mom draft. Here we are on the draw with a pretty nice looking hand. Our opponent may be on a blue white, or sorry, blue red convoke deck. Oh, no, they are playing multiple colors. Both players are going to have a flywheel racer here, potentially. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a race off. 
We need to find some lands here, but we should be good if we can. Whoa. Uh, that is a surprise card to see being played. Because I think this card is quite poor. Especially if you're not in the red-black sack deck, but here we are. Okay, they did miss a land, but they have a portent tracker. What does that mean? That means we can go Omen Hawker, we can crew. And then we can play Inquisitor. Seems good. This already feels like a very, very weird game. Alright, so crew, the racer, attack with both. I take four. They have access to three mana. Oh, they have Kami too. All right, they have a lot of mana without having more than two lands. We did find our next land, which is great. Because that means now I can go crew with the Inquisitor. Smack in for three. And then play out Elspeth, holding up the Incubation. And then next turn, when we hold up the Artistic Refusal, assuming they don't do something crazy this turn, uh, it's going to be pretty hard for them to come back, it feels like. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I mean, they do have access to five mana right now, so... Don't get me wrong. They still have plays, I'm sure. That's that's good. They can put that on the Kami of Whispered Hopes. And all of a sudden that taps for three mana. Three, four. So they still have five mana here. Wow. Okay, crew the racer, yeah. Here's five mana. Javelinier. Oh, well I guess we don't really care about that thing. That's kind of a weird <laughs> Kind of a weird uh, payoff card to see, but no complaints. What is the wording on this? Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature, becomes an angel in addition to its other types, and gains flying. Okay. Well. Um, let's see here. I guess we can just put two counters on our Phyrexian, and if they want to trade with the Javelinier, I'm okay with that. Okay, it's good. Now we go Preening Champion and pass. We're only going to need to use um, Artistic Refusal on like the scariest of cards that they could play. So a lot of stuff we're not even going to bother with, because to cast the Refusal right now, I will have to tap down all of my creatures for Convoke. Which means Avacyn, or not Avacyn, Elspeth would die in that scenario, but I guess that's not the biggest problem. Yeah, we don't care about Renata. They don't have enough cards in their hand for that to matter likely anyways. Three three reach, that's okay. Or five five reach, I guess, with the Kami. Oh, maybe they're a Oh no no no. I got I might get punished for not countering the Renata. But again, I don't want to lose my uh, uh Elspeth here. So Oh, that's a lot of goodies. Uh, let's 
put the, geez, I guess we take the seal, put the marshal in our graveyard, and then the other one goes away forever, something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab another island here. Oh, <laughs> well, we redrew it. <laughs> Let's go uptick. Yeah, I think I'm just supposed to seal the historian and not worry about the Renata. Every time we activate Av uh, God, I keep calling it Avison. Every time we activate Elspeth, Archangel Elspeth, it's like one more free mana towards refusal. What you gonna do here, friend? Oh, is this like a dinosaur? The big dinosaur with Convoke? They're gonna concede when I cast Artistic Refusal if it is. Yeah, it totally is. All right. Got him. And we will discard, let's see, do I have lethal? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, 13 damage. So let's just discard another Inquisitor, I guess, and then go for um, Amonkhet. So, uptick. Crew. Sadly, I need to play this before attacking. Is this arachnid ambush or whatever it's called? Arachnoid web or something? Is that the last card in their hand? Arachnoid Adaptation. It was the last card in their hand. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, we mailed the Geoderm and a land. So it's a 3-3 three, three with Reach now. If I send all my 1-1s one at it, I can get the flip. Yeah, that's worth it. So they get to eat one of my one ones, but I get to flip into like the Alabaster Host Intercessor or something. Or I could just flip into a, no, no, I guess 4-4 four, four Ward Trample's not good enough. Hell, we could even just turn into a 4-4 four, four Norns Inquisitor, that would be really good. Yeah, Intercessor eating Renata seems the safest, though, doesn't it? Or Wrath pumping my team? Man, there's a lot of good options here, but Intercessor seems the safest. Actually, I'm going to eat the Kami. Never mind. The Kami's three mana, plus it's also... Um, a combo with Renata to add extra counters to creatures. And that's probably game. I would think.
All right, sure. Crew. Do they draw Storm the Seed Core? If they did, that's sick. Wow, man, they've been having some good draws. Well, good thing we eat we ate the Kami of Whispered Hopes, otherwise they would have gotten extra 1-1 counters. So those all have Trample and Vigilance this turn. So we can... Block this, chump this. Give pro green. Don't lose our Elspeth. Eat their Renata. Oh, wait. Did I mess up? Oh, this is based on toughness. Oh, I did mess up. I threw away Elspeth. Whoops. That was a big mess up there. Wasn't paying attention, obviously. And, wow, actually, that was really bad. We can't trade here, thankfully. But all of a sudden, I don't have much going on. If I still had my 2-2 flyer, I mean, that would be <laughs> a pretty good start. But yeah, I forgot this was going to fight with its uh, toughness rather than power. Yeah, we're still looking fine here, though. Yeah, or are we? Shoot, we've milled a lot of our best spells. I mean, they should be due for land, I guess, but they can st sack like their uh, racer to their chopper and draw another card. Or sack a land if they want. I guess they can do that pretty easily with two portent trackers, too, yeah. Dude. Wow. Maybe I messed this game up pretty badly. It's a good draw, at least. A crew here. We can add the red. So we don't need to take any damage. Flips into a 4-4 four, because four of the Inquisitor. And land. Not exactly what we were hoping to hit. <laughs> Opponent's going crazy there with the scrap chomper. Blue source? Wait, what? Oh, I guess we already saw a blue source from them. We just haven't seen a blue card yet. Ah, uh, oh my god, that's right. My deck has Elish Norn in it. Well... Sorry, OP. Sometimes you get wrecked. You know what, friends? I think we'll be okay here. <laughs> I think we're going to be all right. Next turn, our creatures get plus one, plus one, and gain double strike. All right. Well, made a small mistake there, but forgot how many good bombs we have in our deck, and we were able to win that first game. So it looks like char or change the equations, probably good versus them. Counter target red or green spell with mana value six or less. Yeah, that seems good. They didn't have much removal. Doesn't look like Realm Breaker's supposed to be correct here. Yeah, let's just take out the Realm Breaker, bring in the change, the equation. Go to game number two. They do have a potential very fast start. Oh, but our hand is amazing. Very nice looking hand. We're not going to be able to hold up the change the equation for a little while, though, feels like. Um, uh, I guess the play is actually Marshall 
into preening champ. Start attacking for three. They opted not to attack with their racer last turn, so that tells us they probably want the mana pretty badly. We have up to four mana this turn. Oh, they have Rada with the uh, flywheel racer. That's cute. I think my hand is so good that I actually want to sit back and not get aggressive here. Funny, the uh, unlike some of the other formats, the Rugged Highlands and whatever aren't duels, so they don't actually help for Rada. But they can still tap and give something plus two, plus two at instant speed, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, here we go. Pump the front liner for two. Crew the racer. Javelin ear again would be okay. Oh, they have a Borber Igmos. Oh, God. Oh, uh, if I had just drawn land next, last turn, we just get to go Norn's Inquisitor, hold up the counter, but... We had to play out the Surveyor to find another land. They will be tapped out, though, so I can seal it away before they can uh, tuck it, but... Found their blue splash card. All right, probably killing my knight here. Yeah, marshal down. So take four, no blocks. Gosh. Ah, this is so awkward. I just need to stabilize. Not being able to hold up this ch change the equation has been so brutal for us. Fearless Scald Double Strike on the Frontliner. So, 3-3 three, three that they can pump up to a 5-5 five, five Double Strike Trample this turn means I'm taking 10 most likely. Yep. No blocks. Take 10, go to 7. We go Inquisitor, Inquisitor, pass. Hold up the token flip, which we can make it into a 4-4. Four, four. The nice thing is this double striker does not have trample, so we can chump it for a while. Okay. Oh, do they have Storm the Seed Core? If they have their Storm the Seed Core, we lose again. Man, ah. Uh. <sighs> Feels like this should be a good matchup for us, but we were always just a little bit behind and never were able to hold up the change the equation. Damn. Good beats. This is definitely Seed Core. No way out of this one. 9-8 Trample Vigilance with Double Strike. Hmm. Well, let's just not lose next game. How about that? I think our deck's too good. 
Wicked Slumber there would have been insane. Wicked Slumber probably would have won us the game that turn. Okay. <sighs> Let's go. Game three, round one. Oh, no. Mulligan down. Oh, no. We have to go down to five. Our deck is so good. Not like this. Yeah, wow. That's so brutal. But we will be able to cast our counters this game at least. I still play out the Norns Inquisitor on turn two, even though they have a bunch of like two mana dorks. Yeah. I think we flip an attack. Let's see what they got. All right, that's not too bad. I guess I'm supposed to just pass here since we have Convoke cards and we have like Elish Norn in our deck. Um, yeah, let's get the essence off. I think we change, hold change the equation still, because that can counter other things as well. But I know, we just know it's Borborugmos anyways. All right, there's refusal to hand. Um, doesn't matter. I guess we put Hawker in the graveyard. I'm going to hold the land this turn, I think. Actually, you know what? I wonder if I should... No, let's, let's just go land pass. I was wondering if I should hold the land for uh, artistic refusal. Rummaging away, but this is fine. I don't think I'm going to get greedy. I think we're just going to cast this off right now. All right, discard lands easy. Yeah, that kind of undoes our mulligan, at least. Sure, Tetsuko's not the worst. All right, we have a lot of freaking insane draws, so let's see if we can just find one of those. Ugh. <sighs> Rada. Yeah, seems like a fine card to counter. All right, let's go ahead and offer the trade now. That way maybe our preening champion can do better work. Two cards in their hand. They have up to seven mana here. Ah, here comes their dinosaur. Isn't that what they had last game? Yeah. 12-12, uh, Ward 2. So what we can do here is we can target the Wicked Slumber on that thing, tapping all of our creatures. It's Ward 2, right? Yeah. And then I can pay the ward and just put both slumber counters on it so it's locked down for a bunch of turns. Nice freaking draw too. Hello. Now we can flip that. Oh yeah, that's great. Go get Rada or Pest or Javelinier. It's 
it's probably safest to get the uh, Intercessor and eat their 12-12. I would guess. Yeah, that's got to be the safest play. Okay. And we nabbed their Storm the Seed core as the last card in their hand, too. So we're actually in pretty good shape if they just brick off this turn. Death Touch. That's more or less fine. I don't actually have any good attacks, though. Yeah. Yeah. Now that they make a 4-4. Four, four. We do have a ton of insane draws. Good. They get to keep poking me. I don't think they can attack with everything necessarily, but yeah, they can keep poking me for a couple points of damage here and there. Ah, yes, there's a good draw, turns out. Six, six flyer versus their four, four reach. It's a two turn clock. Not worth it to uptick Elspeth since they just have so much unblockable damage, anyways. Fearless Scald, that doesn't do anything. So they do have to chump with their Historian next turn, thankfully. Awkwardly, if they put it on any of their other creatures, they turn back into creatures that can be blocked. So yeah, Elspeth down. They have to chump the... Oh, well, that wins too. All right, good beats. We'll look into five and get there. I mean, our deck's insane, and we got a lot of good value. Nice. All right. And now we're 1-0. and oh. Let's go to the next. On to round number two of this drafty. Be on the play. And yeah, hand looks fantastic here. How do we want to sequence this? Um, this looks like turn one Omen Hawker. Turn two Weird plus Tap Land. Seems good. And then we can flip our weird next turn without even having to play a land. If we want. Marshal of Zalfir. Okay, so the opponent's going to be on some biz as well. Let's go ahead and pay. Hitting our other Omen Hawker. All right, so let's attack for three, play out our other Omen Hawker, and then play out our Dismal Backwater, I guess. Shouldn't need to hold up Assimilate Essence this early, although if they play like another Marshal of Zelfir, that would be a little bit unfortunate. They're going to go with the Invasion of Dominaria. Draw a card, gain four life, sure. Preening Champion for us, the draw. Yeah, okay, let's just keep smashing. And then next turn we can play Surveyor plus hold up both Essence and Intervention. Zuri Claw of Progress. All right. Whenever a creature of power two or less enters the battlefield, you get an experience counter. Then at the beginning of your combat, put X1 on counters on another target creature. All right. So that shouldn't really matter all that much. It's a 3-3. Three, three. They might even just trade here. Nope. All right. That's good for us because Wicked Slumber is probably going to be game over, I would guess. Planes. So counter whatever they play here. Slumber, and then do we have lethal? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna have exactly lethal with the uh, intervention plus one plus one counter. All 
right, and that will do just fine. Easy peasy, baby, easy peasy. Any sideboard changes? Change the equation for Azuri? Probably not. It looks like Azuri is their splash, so blue white's going to be their main. Yep, I think we just run it back and say, let's do it again. Alrighty, on to the next game. Not as good as our previous hand, but still solid enough, it appears. Blossoming Sands from the opponent for their Azuri Splash. Ooh, two Blossoming Sands. Lots of green fixing. Um, yeah, let's go with Racer here first. And then we can double spell next turn. So they have a Strobe Knight here on three. That's fine. Okay, go tap, tap. Would be a little bit unfortunate if they could double spell this turn. No, they just have a protocol knight. All right, so that's going to lock down our marshal most likely. Or maybe they turn off the omen hawker. I guess they might. The marshal doesn't really do too much. I mean, I can tap with it right now, but yeah, no, they turned off my uh, omen hawker. <laughs> Halo Forager, interesting. I guess we'll just pass and slumber them. Seems more than fine. So they go with an invasion of Dominaria. All right, we're going to tap down both their creatures in response. And that way they can't play another spell and then make a 2-2 two -two with the knight. Good. Backwater the draw. Hmm. Awkwardly, I don't get to hold up refusal here, but that's probably okay. Land pass. Oh, well, that worked out rather well then. Into a preening champion. Let's see. Preening. Crew. Smack in for four. Hold up the tap of the marshal. Arresting my flyer here. We're going to let that resolve because we can get them pretty good. I can Angelic Intervention my Preening Champion to give it protection from white. And then um, eat their Strobe Knight. So I'm going to actually let that resolve. Because I assume they're going to attack with their Strobe Knight first. Perfect. So pro white will fall off, knock off the realm breaker. Then we can eat the flyer. So they'll just make a two-two here in response, but they don't get to flip their invasion. Most importantly, and all is Gucci, baby. Hmm. Do I want to trade my racer for their knight token? Not particularly, I guess. Let's just attack for three. Play out our other omen hawker, and then uh, hold up the artistic refusal. At some point, I can halo forager the wicked slumber and lock down two more creatures, but that's not a huge necessity. Quende. All right, good enough.
This does mean they get to flip their invasion, but I think I'm... Oh, they didn't even attack it. Well, that's weird. What? Why wouldn't they do that? I am not sure. Okay. Inquisitor, Wrath, Pass, and then we can activate Wrath next turn and attack for a bunch, I guess, or just Halo Forge or their two creatures for the win. Because they're at 10 life? I guess it's just activate a Wrath and attack, right? Crew... Activate. Smack out. I assume that's lethal. All right. <laughs> Good enough for me. 2-0 start. Deck's great. Let's see if we can trophy. Anyway, we are for the third and final round of this March of the Machine draft. We're sitting on the draw with a pretty questionable hand. I think it's okay to keep it, but it's a little bit borderline. Um, need to find a bunch of spells, most likely, but... We've got a castable 2-drop, and... Well, I guess more land now with that first draw step, so... Gonna probably need to find... Mm, something pretty spicy. Is this a... Mirror match? Or at least blue-white. All right, Halo Forager. I mean, on the bright side, the Marshal can act as a little bit of a removal spell, kind of, in the early game. Like, if I don't find something better to do next turn, we can always just tap down instead, but... Hmm. Yeah, I would guess my deck's probably so good that this type of hand is supposed to be a mulligan. Oh, man, and they have the nuts flying start here. Turn two aerialist, turn three preening champion on the play. And that's going to be a hard one to beat, and I don't think Realm Breaker is the way to do it, but I guess I'm going to get that online, as next turn I can tap down and use the Realm Breaker, and if we mill a land with the Realm Breaker, then that'll let us Alabaster on turn five at least. But this is going to be a matchup where the, where the Realm Breaker probably wants to be cut, and... I guess we can bring in, like, Disturbing Conversion or something? Not sure change the equations what we want to bring in, although we'll see. If they have enough other good 2-drops, a counter, a spell that costs 2 or less might not be the worst case scenario. Yeah, who knows, maybe they're playing random black as well. Might be able to unlock our Halo Forager if we're lucky. Alright, they're just going to flip their Aerialist. So that's basically the best thing they could have done this turn for us. As uh, it doesn't add any extra damage and eats up their turn. So pretty happy with that. Not extremely happy with these draws. And the funny thing is, tapping with Marshall here is only gaining one life, because that lets them um, instead then attack with the 1-1 token, so... <laughs> Not even that good. Eyes of Cataxius, yeah... Really need to get on the board, but what can you do? We did hit a land. Inquisitor, Strobe Knight. Oh, yeah, looks like they're just playing blue-white good cards. For sure. Speaking of Inquisitor. Mm. I guess the Inquisitor is actually a better play here for us than it is to run out the Alabaster. Now that they have the uh, incubator token. 
Wait, why is this a... Oh, this is a knight. I was like, why is this a 2-2? Two -two? It's also a knight. <laughs> I guess Elish Norn is our way to win this one, if we can... Well, Elish Norn doesn't even stop the flyers very well. Yeah, this is a bit awkward, because they still get to attack with their 3-3 if they want to, and I think we just have to trade, which means we don't get to use Realm Breaker. So I go to 9. Hmm. Oh, maybe they're going to use something to not make that a trade. What's going on over there, OP? What are you doing? I'm not sure what they're doing over there. Okay, something. Cryptomancer to put a 1-1 counter on. Sure. I get it. You got me. Five cards still in hand. Um... Yeah, kind of bleak. I guess I just eat the 4-4 token and commit to taking another 4 damage in the air. Yeah, I might have wanted to attack with the Marshal as well, but I think just attacking with one is the safest. Take another four, go down to five. Man, another flyer follow up, yikes. Okay, I mean, at least that gives us a small chance. Um, yeah, I guess we're supposed to pay three and cast the eyes of Gataxius for free and draw an extra card. I mean, I need to start attacking. The only awkward thing about this attack is that now I'm letting them attack with the elemental token. I suppose. Because I tap down the whelp, they get to attack with all three. So I guess I'm dying to a removal spell. But when they have five, now six cards in their hand, really, like, what am I hoping to do? Yep, and that'll do her. Eat the Halo Forger, GG. So technically wouldn't have died again if I didn't attack with the 2-2, but like, is that really a good spot to be in? We don't have a way to deal with that many flyers. Alrighty. Hmm. 
So Realm Breaker needs to probably come out. Conversion to turn off the, a flyer is not terrible. I don't really want to be, I guess that's fine. Just make that one little swap and go to game two. Okay, on to the next game here of the final round. We'll be on the play this time. All right. Oh, man. I'm not going to mulligan it. We have our Elish Norn. We have a turn to Inquisitor. In theory, this hand <laughs> could do some work. Will it? Yeah, I'm going to need to find a couple of lands. Ideally blue to start and then uh, maybe even a black if we're lucky Ooh, that is really bad okay we're gonna have a bad bad issue here if we just uh, don't draw land next turn yeah and here we go okay well kept a slightly sketchy hand um it's actually not even that sketchy. If you think about it, I have two land cyclers and in addition to 15 lands. So odds are we should hit in the first two draw steps, even if it's not, ex I mean, specifically a blue source, no, but a land in the first three draw st or two draw steps is likely because we're over 50% each draw. So they go with the strobe knights. Obviously, still need to find a little bit more action here. Hmm. We might want to hold on to the Ulish Norn until we can play it and activate it immediately. And given that we have Omen Hawker, we would only need, what, five mana to do so? I guess five lands. Is there just passing with all that mana open? Okay, that was a good draw. I have no faith that this 3 3 is actually going to attack, but I don't think I'm supposed to just sit back. Yeah, that's fine. Well, if they can cast another spell end of turn, they can make a 2 2. Looks like they couldn't, though. Okay, I mean, I think we're in an okay spot, all things considered. Another blue source off the top, one time. They're going to go with an Oculus Whelp. All right, fair enough. Hey, we did hit the island too. Good, good, good. All right, so let's go Hawker here. Pass. I'm just going to plan on using Slumber. I also get to hold up Assimilate Essence because I can Slumber off of Double Convoke. Let's see if we can get them. So we're going to want to slumber in response to whatever their first spell is, I guess, for the strobe knight purposes. I guess I could have just upkeeped the uh, wicked slumber as well. There was nothing wrong with that. Because I suppose now if they have an instant, 
they can cast it in response and then make a 2-2. Like if they have their Cryptomancer again or whatever, it's kind of annoying. Oh, they have a negate. Wow, that's really bad. Okay, so let's counter that. Otherwise, they're going to flip a 5-5. Five, five. I'm going to take 5, and they're going to make a 2-2. Two, two. And then I guess I might just be forced to run out the Elish Norn and hope. Hmm. Oh, pretty bad, pretty bad. That's kind of interesting, actually. I guess Elish Norn wouldn't even win here, necessarily. Once again, I'm just kind of dying to Flyers. I wonder if I want a Halo Forge or this turn, but... Yeah, let's play Norn and Hawker. Say go. Any interaction and we're basically dead. Though the bright side is if Elish Norn sticks and they do attack me, they do lose a little bit of life themselves unless they pay mana into it. Invasion of Ravnica! Is that Exile too? <sighs> exile my Elish Norn. Fair enough. Uh, we're kind of hoping they do attack this and flip it into a random 5-5, five, five, right? Yeah, because I don't think this card is all that impressive. But even still, we're pretty, pretty dead here, it feels like. Notably, casting the invasion is a second spell, so they make another 2-2. Two, two. I guess that's maybe one of the reasons they did that. And this is basically just invasion and concede. Don't think we have a way out of this without having like a sunfall in our deck. And Offensa too, nice. Alright, GG's. Good beats. Their deck was pretty strong as well. I think our deck was fantastic, but 2-1's probably the average... Uh, the average record you're going to get with something like this. Triple Norns and Inquisitors, absolutely nuts. We had Elish Norn, we had Avacyn. Um, so, pretty nice looking blue-white with a little bit of splashing black. But hopefully you all enjoyed that. Leave a comment down below telling me what I did poorly. Or just say, hey, what's up? How's it going? And we'll see you back next week for some more. Bye-bye.